Welcome to the course. Over the next 15 minutes, I'll provide you with a clear, concise, and thorough explanation of what is Lean. I'll go through its definition and explain some of the fundamental principles that Lean builds upon. I'll give you a glimpse into some of the results and benefits that Lean can achieve. Whether you work in an office, a production environment, or you're a student, you will have the foundations to which to build your lean understanding and start your journey to become a certified lean practitioner. With the rapid increase in globalisation, customers now have access to a much wider choice. The ability to easily look at customer reviews and quickly decide which products are the best value means you have to provide superior value for money or you simply won't survive. Now more than ever, Customers are expecting better quality products and services at less cost and delivered almost instantly. In the past, businesses would simply work out their costs and add a profit margin to decide the new price. Now, with the vast amount of competition, the price becomes fixed and the race is on to reduce costs and improve quality. That is exactly where Lean comes in. Lean is about doing more with less, more value for the customer more flexibility and more focus on customer requirements in less time with less resources, energy, pollution and space. At its most simple level, this is what being lean is. Cutting out the fat, which is waste, and working in an effective and efficient way. I would like to point out the difference in these two words. Effective meaning doing the right things and efficient meaning doing things right. In other words, working effectively means to work in a way that maximises customer value, and efficiently doing things right means cutting out the waste that is time, energy, etc., i.e. working in a smart way. Think of this like swimming, where you're competing in a 50 metre race. You can swim really efficiently with a perfectly executed breaststroke that converts almost all your energy into movement, but still not win the race. This would be efficient, but not effective. Or you could swim really inefficiently with a front crawl, splashing everywhere, but still complete the length faster than before. That would be effective, but not efficient. The best of both worlds would be a combination, highly effective and highly efficient, with a front crawl stroke, with little splashing, converting almost all your energy into movement. These two words will be used throughout the course and it's important to distinguish between them now. So you may be asking where did lean originate from and where can it be applied? Well lean originated in manufacturing and it can be applied absolutely everywhere. Lean is not limited by an industry, sector, size of business or any way of working. Lean is a set of principles and understanding of how things can work in a smarter way. Lean should be seen much more than simply a set of tools. Lean is an improvement mindset that can be applied within your business, in your personal life, or even at home in your kitchen. If you have ever visited McDonald's and been amazed at the speed in which they can turn your order out, that is all down to lean thinking and techniques. Lean tools have been exploited by Formula One teams aiming to gain a competitive advantage and carry out a pit stop in under two seconds. With the rise of online grocery shopping, especially during the COVID-19 period, companies like Ocado have used lean techniques to pick items in a fraction of the previous time. There really are countless examples of where lean has been applied, whether that be in hospitals, civil service or large infrastructure projects. I would like to mention now that wherever possible throughout the course, I will refrain from using manufacturing or automotive specific examples where possible. But to add to that, many examples and principles are best explained from where they originated from. So if you work in a different environment, don't worry, the same principles can be equally as applicable within your work environment. So what is the definition of lean? If someone asked you to describe lean in one sentence, what would it be? Well, the fundamental principles of lean are to identify and reduce wastes within processes, to increase customer value by involving people. Without these three things combined, reducing waste, increasing customer value 
and involving people, lean will not survive. We will explain exactly what we mean by waste and customer value in the next module, but for now let's talk about these three separate elements of lean. The aim is, and should always be, to try and eliminate waste wherever possible. Simply put, the best way to improve the efficiency of a process is to eliminate the need to do it completely. Try and think within your business whether there are any processes that could be eliminated without any impact on the business. In reality, waste often cannot simply be eliminated and processes can't be removed. In many cases, in order to eliminate waste, you may need to first minimise the waste or even isolate it. This idea of isolating waste is something that is not widely known or discussed within lean textbooks, but is extremely important. Let's use an example to help explain it. Let's imagine you're in a supermarket and employees are stocking shelves. There is a cage containing the products at the end of the aisle and the workers walk to and from the cage collecting products and restocking them onto the shelves. In this scenario, what is waste and what is adding value? Well, movements to and from the cage is waste. The operator's value-adding role is to stock shelves and they're not stocking shelves by walking back and forth to the cage. So how can we eliminate this waste? Well, let's now imagine each employee carries a basket containing their required products. Now, all they need to do is walk down the aisle once, stocking the shelves with the products within their basket. This has eliminated the waste of walking to and from the cage. It is not always this easy to eliminate waste. In other circumstances, limitations such as space constraints, a lack of budget, or scarcity of resources mean that it isn't possible. In that case, we can only minimise and not eliminate the waste. This would mean moving the cage to the middle of the aisle, so each employee needs to walk a shorter distance, thus minimising that waste. If you can't eliminate or minimise waste, you should always aim to isolate any remaining waste. To help demonstrate this, we have coloured the animation green for value add and red for waste activities. One employee could distribute the products from the cage to all the employees, thus isolating the waste of movement to that one role only, enabling the other operators to focus on stacking shelves. Now that we have isolated the waste to that one person doing the movement, we can start to target the waste and eliminate or minimise it. One solution could be to provide the movement operator with a motorised vehicle so they can now replenish their colleagues' stock much faster, gaining spare time to also restock shelves themselves. This improvement simply wouldn't have been possible without first isolating the waste to that one person. You can think of this almost like the kitchen porter who wipes down the surfaces, takes the bins out and collects the potato peelings. Waste has been isolated to that one person, enabling the chefs to focus solely on the cooking activities. By having the kitchen porter specialised solely to the waste role, their role can then be optimised and the overall output of the team is much greater than if they split the waste activities between them. Reducing waste is a key part, but far from the entirety of lean. Let's go back to our definition. Lean is about identifying and reducing wastes to increase customer value by involving people. Increasing customer value means providing more to the customer than what they previously had. For example, if you've reduced waste, you'll now have freed up resources that can be used to provide a better product or service to your customer. This might include increasing the quality of the product, reducing the lead time, or perhaps providing a customer support service. Increasing customer value involves viewing the product or service through the eyes of the customer and making efforts to continuously improve their experience. If you were to imagine being at a theme park where there are often very long queues, as viewed by the customer, queuing could be seen as a waste, not adding any value to their experience. With Lean, it isn't just about simply eliminating or minimising this waste. It also includes increasing customer value. For this example, that could mean providing entertainment in the queues, keeping visitors amused and making the queuing 
an enjoyable part of the experience. The reason why I've used this example is because lean doesn't have to just be focused on reducing waste. Many people get caught in a trap where they only see lean as waste cutting. It is so much more than this. If you are increasing customer value, then that is equally lean, providing more with less. The symbiotic relationship between reducing waste and increasing customer value works perfectly. The reduction of waste often frees up resource, which can then be deployed to increase customer value and drive growth for the business. Last but not least, lean requires the involvement of people. It may seem strange to emphasise this within the definition. Surely it isn't that important or it's a given. Well, the involvement of people really is that important. Ultimately, it is the people that have control of whether to change and improve. Improving processes is important, but if people don't embrace change, then hard work can all be for nothing. There are three main reasons why involving people is so important within Lean. Firstly, getting more people involved has a powerful compounding effect on your end result. If all employees make repeated small contributions to waste reduction, the total result will be many times greater than a one-off sprint or a focused effort. It's everyone's responsibility to improve. Secondly, managers traditionally used to make decisions on their own. But now, with information and learning becoming so readily available, the increased number of people going to university, college or getting diplomas, the workforce is increasingly better educated. We should be involving the collective skills and knowledge of everyone to make better decisions. You will likely have a subject matter expert within your company that you never knew about. Lastly, it's important to understand that the people that do their job day in, day out are the experts in what they do. And as the experts, they're in the perfect position to help spot problems, provide solutions and drive the change we're looking for. So they should be involved from the start. So that is the full definition of lean and the definition that you should try and remember. In order to start our lean journey, we need to first understand exactly what waste is. The Japanese word muda is one that you must know. It is just what it sounds like. It's heavy and foul and sticks in your mouth. Muda means waste or any activity for which the customer is not willing to pay for. Just a note here, throughout the course you'll be introduced to different Japanese words. These will be marked with the rising sun icon. The reason we include these words is not just to pay homage to the origins of lean, but because often the Japanese words don't have English equivalents or provide an enhanced understanding. Let's look at an example of Muda. If a car manufacturer is spending £200 on every car to fix defects during the inspection phase, are you willing to have that cost added onto the price of your car? Are you the customer willing to pay for that? If you're not, then this will be classed as muda. The same could be said for other wastes, such as transport. Would you be willing as a customer to pay for your car to be transported back and forth between different factories? These are all wastes and don't add direct value to the product. We will revisit the idea of waste much more in the coming modules, but it's something worth introducing now. We'll finish this module with an understanding that lean should be viewed as a journey. The lean journey is the never-ending pursuit for 100% value-added operations with no mooder, maximising value for the customer and involving all people within your organisation. Lean is a mindset, it is behaviour-driven and it is about what people do every day without being told to do it. The important thing with lean is that it is about experimentation, trying new things out, thinking in a different way, and engaging everyone to question the norms. Some of you may have heard of different lean tools like 5S, SMED or Kanban before. Others may be completely new to it. Don't worry, they'll be explained throughout the course. So let's recap what we've learned in this module. Lean is about doing more with less. The definition of lean is to identify and reduce waste to maximise customer value.
by involving people. Without these three things, lean will not survive. We've learnt the Japanese word for waste is muda, and that is anything the customer is not willing to pay for, and anything that adds no value. We've learnt that wherever possible you should aim to eliminate waste. If not, you should minimise it, and at the very least you should try and isolate all remaining waste. Finally, we've learnt that lean is not a one-off event. It's the ongoing pursuit to this 100% state of value add.